Welcome to another uh, cloud computing meeting, you guys. Today, I'm not going to talk about cloud computing. I'm going to talk about our condo cluster at Iowa State. And just to be clear, this, this is a formal cluster. It's not an actual, it's not a, a server like the impact servers or Linux 10 or Linux 11. So when you log into it, there is going to be a head node. And node is just a group of CPUs, and a CPU is just a group of cores, and that's sort of your 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 breakdown of computing resources, um, well, your processor resources. And when you log onto the head node, that's just a couple CPUs, and then from the head node, you will submit jobs to a collection of other nodes. There are several. There are are, it's not just the head node. So when you log on, if you check you know, the number of CPUs or the number of cores and you get a small number, just know that you have access to this you know, huge bundle of computing resources that's, that, that you have to formally submit jobs to, to access. And I'll go over that. So to set up your account, you would contact this HPC help address. They're really fast, really quick about, about uh, getting you the right materials to set up an account. I've worked with them in tech support for uh, my, my own issues that I've struggled with. And you log in with Google Authenticator, which is a phone app. Raymond installed it on a computer, so he can tell you how to get it on a computer if you don't have or you don't care to use a mobile phone. So. Uh, it's it's possible to use it on a on your on your local machine, but that's another that's a layer of security that that uh, LIS uses for access to Condo and its other clusters. So, and then they send you an email and you follow the setup instructions. The email looks so, kind of like this. They give you an authenticator code, and you have another one-time code which is different. And you can scan one of these into your phone, the authenticator uh, code into your phone. Basic, uh, basically, you just open the Google Authenticator app. And within Authenticator, there is a scanner, bit of scanner software built in. And you just put your phone over this barcode and scan it. I'm pretty new to that stuff. But that last sentence is key, because that's what we have to improve it. Yes. So patience is key when we're setting it up. So, and if you, um, for some reason, you lose your one-time code, they may be able to recover it for you, the HPC help people. Also, yeah. sometimes, the, you're, yeah. But if you forget, like, the password or everything, you have to re go through all these all again. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. yeah. But bear in mind also that Authenticator may not accept your verification code all the time, and I'll go over that in a bit. Um, uh, so there's there sometimes it may not let you on, but things are okay anyway, and I'll I'll go over a little bit of what I mean when I explain Authenticator. So this is what it looks like. So this thing, this six-digit string, is a verification code, and it is this code that renews every few seconds. So I have it on my phone already, and you can see the Authenticator. You can see the uh, the code, and yeah, there's this little icon here that's part of a, a wheel, that uh, part of a pie wheel, and it gets eaten up 
over time? It's 20 seconds. 20 seconds, okay. Renews every 20 seconds. You guys, uh, you guys remember the movie A Beautiful Mind? And where, where John Nash has this, in his, in his uh, um, delusions, he has this code on his arm that, that's different every time you look at it to, for him to access stuff. That's, that's what this is. You're, you're John Nash accessing, uh, you know, some, some Cold War machine. That's, that's what I think of every time I log into Condo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a twenty Yeah, it is troublesome, but they don't want to use SSH keys and that's I guess their decision. So to log in, first you need to choose which node you're gonna log into or or to use, you know, SSH for. So there's the head node, which for most purposes you would use for you know, SSH, SCP, that sort of stuff. And it's just your standard SSH, your username, and that's the address that you, that you type in after the at sign. Um, there's also a data transfer node. You can log into this. It's condo DTN. But, um, that's for transferring files that are several gigabytes to terab a terabyte, if you have even have that space. Um, so there is a node specifically devoted to uploading and downloading large data sets, or you know thousands of, of files that are each a megabyte in size. Um, so if you're doing that kind of file transfer, I would use the the condo DTN instead of condo, but you're going to use the condo head node for most purposes. You can you can log into either if you want, and you'll see the same file system when you do. Thank you. Where did you find this information? Oh, that's a good point. So I will skip to the docs then. Um, I was planning to show this at the end, but uh, repository. I guess I should. I can go to. Uh, let's see. I can go to the GitHub page. So if you go to GitHub, github.com slash wlandau slash condo, I've been cheated for everything I'm going to go over today. Well, almost, except for, um, well, everything, yeah. Uh, you go to docs, and there's this workshop that I attended on July 9th, and this condo and science document is most of what they use during that presentation. So a professor from the math department um, so used that. that they only give to those people who go to the workshop, or it's not like online somewhere? Well, they, they email it to people who are on their, uh, were, uh, were signed up for it, yeah. or yeah. attended. Yeah. The workshop is the most useless thing you can go to, right? They, I didn't get much out of it either. I, I, I found it kind of, I found it kind of frustrating that they they required us to use MPI, which, or they assumed that we were, that everybody used MPI, which, you know, I don't use. Most of us don't use. But there are ways around it, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit. So. So the point is, this is nowhere online. It's just registering for the workshop will get you the document. Well, it's online now because I posted it. Yes. Yes. But that's the only. <laughs> but it wasn't online before. I grant you that. So, uh, here's something I forgot to go over. So, just the specs. So, in addition to that head node, there are 144 other nodes. Well, may, that may include the head node. But you have. Um, each has two 8 core CPUs, and you can look up the memory. And there are some bigger nodes. There's a large and a huge memory node. Um, I, you have to, I guess, request those specifically with your, uh, with with your script where you submit jobs. Um, I can go over how that works in a bit. Um, there's the there's a head node and the data transfer node. Condo does not have GPUs yet. When you said you were, uh, in you you had used some CUDA before. 
So Kondo does not have GPUs. Science uh, does. I don't how I don't know if we can get access to science, but they do. They they have 24 GPU nodes, um, or K20s, and HPC class has a couple of um, has a few GPU nodes. They're either grids or Teslas. Um, I don't remember, uh, but. Uh, if you're taking a class, you can get access to the HPC class cluster, and submitting jobs in HPC class is very much like submitting jobs on Condo. So that might be a good thing. Do you know, what's this, do you know which queue is for the large, for the huge memory nodes? Hmm. I didn't actually find a queue for that, so that's... Yeah, I don't know. I, that's, that's why I thought like, it never exists. <laughs> those, those things. I think you can refer to that one thing because it's really sort of like a, so you, so basically you can just request all these resources. For HPC class, there is a script writer for the, uh, which I was going to get to later, but I guess I'll, I, a lot of things point to this, so I guess I'll go over it now. So, and I'll come back to it. So the nodes, for this is for HPC class, and you can request the type of node. You can request uh, among these three, which is what's available in HPC class. I don't know if this exists for Condo. Um, but it's it's useful for some things about you know how do you set up things in Condo, but the nodes are different, obviously. So uh, that would sort of be what to look into. Uh, but there is a way to specify the node type in those uh, in the commands that you use to submit the jobs. And uh, yeah. So this was intended to be specific to HPC class, but if the nodes that if you request a compute node, then then that'll it'll, it'll work for Condo because Condo also has compute nodes. Yeah. But until Condo has GPU nodes, you know if you if you set up a script with, with uh, selection of GPU yeah, up here, then yeah. But my, so the reason I'm asking is because this script has been there for a while. Okay, it did not used to be called HPC. So I suspect that it's the same thing, and this will work everywhere. So previously, we used to, if you were on science club, there was something called science club mentioned it. Okay, that was the people's thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was something else called the science also, right? That thing too. But it was called education in this. But anyway, previously, we created one script for all of them, similar script, and then wherever you had access, you dumped it. Right? So mm -hmm. that's why I'm wondering if you actually create this script here and use it, use it on. Uh, is condo. Yeah, as far as I know, if the node types agree and if your time limit isn't too unreasonable yeah. for the machine that you're on, it should. I've I've written scripts here and then submitted them on condo. Okay. I know it works. I know it works. Perfect. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will get to that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I. Yeah, so I maybe I should have presented things in a different order because we're sort of uh, tending toward these things. But I will I will come back to this. Uh, let's see. So right now I think for everybody else I think we should uh, continue with this login and and specs just to get more of an idea of where to begin. So all right, so we're logging in. Let's say we're logging in here. You enter their verification code, enter your password, and you should be on. Um, that's where we sort of stop before this tangent. So before you submit jobs, it's really it's important to know what's what the, I mean files were expected to use and what folders were expected to use. Um, so your home directory is home slash whatever your username is. So mine would be home slash Landau. So uh, you can put stuff here. You can't really, um, it's not a good place to submit jobs from. They don't recommend that. 
So everything you want to go into your job to submit in the cluster, you would you would put here. Now our group is stat capital S capital T capital A capital T, um, and that folder already exists. But uh, yeah. Okay. But, uh, for that, like work for that uh, cluster, for that work directory, actually the whole the department share a big store, a big storage. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. That's, that's the that, reason. That, that, that's why you can save a lot of results on there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So for those of you who are listening uh, to the video, the reason that you don't want to submit jobs from your home directory is you're only given one gigabyte of space, and you're given uh, lots more storage in the work directory. Now I should say that up to here. Up to here, this folder already exists, but you're going to have to create uh, this last folder yourself, the one for your username. <laughs> yep, you can create whatever name you want. <laughs> whatever name you want, you can create. But it's better, it's better to create to yeah. Yourself. So I have a question. The group process was stat? Yes. Stat. Uh, just S-T-A-T. Just, uh, S -T -A -T. I guess I can log in to clear things up here. So it's about time I logged in. Yep. This is your work directory. Right. And I, I set up my bash RC so that I automatically go into my work directory and just not go into the home folder at all because I live in my work directory. It's useful. So. Out of curiosity, how do we use negative 270% of our monthly allocation? We didn't move, we didn't lose mm -hmm. too much by last two months. So now, like, accumulate, like, we have too many more. OK. Yeah. So OK. The rest yeah. of the sentence is kind of off. But yeah. So yeah, can you, can you explain why this? Yes? It's okay. pooled. It's the group. It's the group. No, it has a monthly Sorry, allocation. allocation. Yeah. But you can store, you can be on the backlog, it says, up to three months. So you can carry over up to three months of balance. And then what happens? And you, you lose whatever before. So, so we better get on. Absolutely. I mean, like, <laughs> so we have 80, 87, 84 hours that we have per month. OK. Right? And we have an allocation, a balance right now of 24,000, right, which is yeah, about yeah. three times that. So yes, we have not been using it well. So we shouldn't be alarmed then by this minus 270%. No. OK, that's good. So we have moral. The moral is, for those of you who are listening online, is that we have, we have a lot of node hours, and, and we, we feel free to go on as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happens if you go over. So if jobs are, I don't think you need special permission to create the home. Yeah. Yeah. Once you can log on, you can create this folder with just an mkdir command. Make their, yeah. 
listen to Nike, try to go to other groups. Hmm. Yeah, I try that. <laughs> <laughs> So, like R is accessible to us? so yes, R is accessible. I'll go over that in a minute. Uh, they they have this they have this package management system that where we can load load things. Um, let's see. So you have your home directory, your work directory. If you're going to upload large data for jobs, uh, I put it in the ptemp directory. So it's the same story with the work directory. You're given this. You need to create this. But if you have several gigabytes or up to you know a couple terabytes or so, yeah, put your data there. But this is scratch space, right? Which means that they're going to delete it whenever they want. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, but it's, it's 30 days. 30 days? I think you repeat it for 30 days. That's the, uh, okay. that's the norm in educational class or whatever, HPC class I built with these two things. Right, but so if we have, if you had large data that you would want to work with repeatedly, right, you wouldn't want to put it there. You have to buy as much space. Yeah, you mentioned that you mounted a drive on on condo, was it? Yeah, or okay, that's yeah, that seems like a fix if you don't want to if you don't want your your data to be deleted too fast. And as far as the time limit for PTEMP, I think that document that I showed you before from, that, from the July 9th workshop may have more details about that. This is just an overview here that I'm giving. Um, but the, the point would be if you're creating large data files that you don't need or something, you could put them there. But if you need them right. temporarily or something. Yeah, temporary files go there. Even um, the presenter in that workshop said that l any large data files could go there as well. It didn't sound like it, the files are being deleted too frequently. Yeah. So let's see if I have that document still open. So huh. so in the present directory was explained. Transfer. Okay. I think to know for sure how often, if to to verify that the time between deletions of of everything in your ptemp folder. Um, to verify that, you probably need to contact HPC Help. Um, if to verify that Condo is, is the same as HPC Class in that respect. Yeah, sure. All right. So that's what you need to know about in terms of folders. So to transfer large data, you would do this. You would just you would just log in. You could you could uh, do this from your local machine. You could also log in directly to the data transfer node. Make sure to create your ptemp folder if it's not already there. Um, the presenters recommended rsync instead of SCP because if your upload gets interrupted, it can just pick up where you left off rather than having to upload the entire thing all over again, which is what SCP does. But here are some example commands of how to do that. Let's say I'm logged on. This is assuming I'm logged into the condo data transfer node, and I want to copy something from impact four. Yeah. Capital S, the capital S flag. Capital S, right. So it means a sparse transfer of files, because what happens is otherwise files might get populated in different places, the files can go in size and transfer. So always use capital S. The sparse transfer is what cap with the S flag does in R sync. Um, yeah, yeah. In R sync, yeah. Okay. Or you can write that that's sparse. Okay. 
Uh-huh. Good, good. Yeah, so Z, the, uh, for everyone else, the Z, uh, Z flag and the S flag are also useful for rsync. For very, very big files. Capital S, sorry. Capital S, lowercase z. Good. So finally, we're at submitting a job. So that is typically done from the head node. You would just go to your work directory, make sure it's created. And then you submit something with this q sub command. So if your if you're dot script file uh, contains commands to submit a job, you can say just q sub and then this thing. A lot of the commands that you're going to use uh, are, you know, they, they start with a q. So you have, you'll have q sub and q stat and q del to manage jobs. So any, there are all these q commands that you, that you use. So, and that has to do with the and if you want to know more about this and get really good at it, the system is for that manages the cluster is called Portable Batch uh, Portable Batch System or PBS. And uh, so I'm going to go back and go over some more things, but right now I'll just uh, just go over some links. Yeah. So you'll either need, if you need some, uh, R packages, you'll either need to install, I would install a local library in your home directory. But are we allowed to install the packages? Locally. Yeah. If, you're, if, if it says permission denied, then you know, it's, it's not going to allow you to do things that you're not allowed to do. So if, uh, if you try to set to install R packages locally and it goes through, then you're, then you're OK and you haven't broken any rules. So, yeah, it, it was just the same as like uh, when we install our package in the in the server. When we install it, like uh, typically, if you didn't touch anything, uh, then it will it will try to create a local directory. So you don't have to worry worry about it. But but, but before that, you do have to do the more two things. Mm -hmm. I think you will you will qualify. A little bit, yeah. Otherwise, you won't be able to actually file a file. Yeah. Um, honestly, what I did with HPC class was I installed my own local version of R, and that's working out really well. Uh, and you know, if you want to go ahead and do that in your home directory, I think that would make things a lot easier. Because current version of R in um, Condo is 3.2.0, and versions of R obsolesce really fast. So um, rather than asking them every single time to upload, to install a new version of R for everyone, um, you know, it's another it's another choice, and this is this is who you would email to do that. Uh, if you wanted, say, everybody to have, if you wanted to have a new version of R and didn't want to install it locally, they can install it for you. Well, I, I, I think actually you should probably get the LAS uh, LAS uh, PC the LHS PS IP guy instead of HPC guy because actually the R the R module is handled by LAS. Oh, I see. So maybe the So the I usually just talk to Alan. <laughs> talk to who? Alan. Alan's not there anymore, right? Yeah. Alan's yeah. over there, right? Oh, no, no. Oh. oh, just not. He was. Okay. <laughs> so. It's been months away, man. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, like, but Alan still have the office over here. Over okay. there. Like, two, okay. like, like, a month before. Oh, but I guess his, I guess his email. What's up, Oh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I, uh, but he told me that, and now you just send email to the IT. So LAS is the person is the is the group to contact it about R. Yeah. So global software modules uh, LAS manages that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I put the R MPI package up here because um, 
Condo is very MPI oriented. The whole presentation on July 9th was around MPI. It's frustrating for me, but you can take advantage of that. There's the MPI package, our MPI package. Um, Condo has several versions of MPI. If you're into that sort of thing, um, you can run uh, our MPI and take advantage of, of that. So the PBDR packages, this is a project that um, uh, George Ostrichov and his group is working on in, at uh, Oak Ridge National Lab. And they use MPI and plug it into the S4, the S4 methods in R. And they, they, use MPI, they use MPI behind the scenes as well. Um, that's another thing. But you really don't, yeah? Oh yeah? So Wei Chen Chen was behind uh, PBDR as well. Very nice. Yeah. Good. So I put a link to the materials. Uh, it includes the, for today's talk, it includes these slides and a few links. I may be adding some more links. Um, and I mentioned a script writer, and I'll go over that uh, right now, actually. So we submit jobs through a PBS script. And these are regular bash shell commands. So you want to run a job for one hour on, let's say, let's put, uh, let's put four hours on two CPUs and with four gigs of memory. And uh, let's stick to compute nodes for now. And let's say you're, good, you're just going to run r cmd batch um, run.r, and those are your commands. And you click PBS scripts, and this is what it gives you. It's very verbose. And these hash PBS um, directives are commands to the portable batch system um, program that uh, control parameters for your job, output files, uh, the error, yeah, error stream, number of nodes, PPN. I think I selected two, G, two uh, CPUs, and this might be where that comes from. The type of the node, compute node, so if you're using a GPO, GPU node or if you're using one of those large or huge nodes, you would probably replace this compute with something else. And wall time is maximum time you run some, that to uh, run something. And let's see. So there's also this bit about changing to your work directory so, your, so the files that are created and output actually go to the right place, go to your work directory. And then your commands are just at the bottom. And anything at the bottom here is submitted to the nodes you requested. Do you have to write your R code any differently than you would if you were just running it on your own personal no. computer? No. Okay. So uh, one question before we maybe move on. So what would have happened if you get the default memory, like 4 gigabytes or something, right? For no? Mm -hmm. The default memory was 1 gig, what is it? 4. four the, gig, the default was 4, yeah. So where is that into? Good question. Sure. Let's uh, let's try eight gigs and see. Well, sixteen. Let's say. Sure. And uh, let me see. Looks the same to me. Looks the same to me too. I'm not sure where it specifies the amount of memory. So, but back on this question of writing your R script differently. Right. So one of the things we commonly do is say we want to parallelize over a simulation but doing the same method. You know, so how do you tell the code that you know for each of the different Occupies. sixteen processes? Occupies. You use the how command line occupies. Like uh, so you so you use all the do so you do want to change the code a little bit so in our code you you keep the doing the argument. So like instead of so our command bat you would have a yeah. argument there? Yeah, so here's argue, here's a Here's an example of, um, of a script 
that I have on Kondo. Let's see. Um, so this is very similar. Let me zoom out just so it's easier to see um, cleanly. So here I've I wrote this note to myself that how you submit this script. I know it's called SM2, but I originally called it job.sh, but I didn't change this. So, so if you want to pass in a, an argument to a PBS script, you would use this dash V flag, and then right after it, whatever shell variable name you want. And so you've created, a, you've defined this environment variable A to be equal to one. And then inside here, this command where I call R, I would pass in that argument here to as as an R command line argument. Um, that's how I've been. That's how I've been doing things. So that makes A always one, right? Yes, unless I unless I say dash V A equals two, for example, and. Right, but that one Q sub command is going to spawn the whole set of processes, right? Correct. It's going to spawn. It's going to spawn a set of processes. Well, it's going to spawn one job, and that could, and you could spawn several processes from that, from that job. Um, let's see. So what Jared is saying? Okay, so this is what you should do. I would do it. Put it up. So basically, your point is that different R's are going to work on different, different yeah. R scripts are going to work on different files, right? Yeah. I'd probably put it in as a loop in there or something. Loop in where? No, no, not loop, sorry. What I meant was that, uh, so let the node number of job, job number, whatever it's called, uh, put that in as a, as a, as a argument to this R. And according to that, inside R, the, the correct file will be. Right. So, so the question is, how do you do it? Yeah, yeah. So no, I think you do it exactly the same. So, no, but so how do you get access to that variable that says that this is node number one, or this is job? No, I don't want to read the argument okay. at all. Yeah. I'm saying so how... You want right. to track the so where the nodes are Yeah, which node is, right? I, so that's why I'm hoping MPI or you can track where the, the job is. There is a file. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. The PBS, the, the PBS look this file. That no, we... Like uh, I thought you said that the core they care about MPI, but I don't know. But what yeah. about open MP? I haven't tried open MP on, on this, but... Presumably they they allow it. OpenMP is easier than MPI in my opinion to learn. So wait, wait, I haven't tried it though. I I think I haven't tried to use it. I'm I'm I'd be surprised if they didn't have it. Let's see, module. So to, to see what kind of modules you have, you'd say module list. So and then list. Open MP? Oh, OK. Module avail. How's that? Yep. So by default, we have Intel's MPS. By default, you have nothing. Always. Like you have to log in. You have to log in. All these things. So, yeah. Intel's MPI is available somewhere, but there is also there's also Open MPI. A couple versions of Open MPI. There's a mode of MPI here. Yeah, there there are several versions of MPI here. So when you do MPI run, what does it do? It does go and open and goes to Open MPI. Uh, it goes to. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what what specific MPI version it uses. Let me let me see if. If you load in with if you load in the mod or open MPI, it will use the load. Oh, you have to load it first. Regardless of what you do. Before you load it, you have nothing. And that's what I'm saying. Okay. Right. Let's see. Did I do a module load? I I don't need an explicit module load personally to use. Um, the hard drives they need different. I don't know. If yeah. So 
so yeah, so there it's open. Yeah, and it goes to the Intel MPI. It it lets you do that. Also, things on things you see on the head node are different from things you see on the cluster. So what I just did may not reflect what happens on those compute nodes. Yeah. Yeah. The modules? No, the, the, the drives. The drives. The, yeah, I'm, I haven't tried to load drives, so I think you know about m that more than I no, do. I okay. okay. <laughs> From reading that document, uh -huh. just quickly, it seemed like maybe the way you're supposed to do it is to copy it onto that PCAP, and then you have access to that PCAP. Okay, that's the only way to do it. I don't, well, I don't know. I have no idea, but that's what it seemed like in the document. Yeah, that's yeah. So we don't have much time, so there are a couple things that I want to get to. Um, you'll notice in, let's see, in this script that I have here that I've been using, uh, where I reserve all the cores, one node, all cores, it's a compute node, I run for 72 hours, blah, blah, blah. Um, this command, this, when I run R, I explicitly, let's see, oh, um, actually better to go to the example that I have on Condo. So, yeah, if you, let's see, so if you want to get uh, two examples that will work on, on Condo that I've tested, well, that I think will work. Last, when I, last time I tested, they, did, they, they worked just fine, but, um, you would go to, you could um, just clone the uh, condo repo that I put together. So you do that by saying git clone git at github.com-wlandau-condo. And I'm not going to run this, actually, but this will download all materials from today. You'll have to set up git and set up your SSH keys on condo, but git, is, git has really good guides about how to do that. I already did that. I have this condo folder here. Go to examples. Let's go to the simple example. Now notice, um, let's see. So simple.script is the, is the PBS script that I have. Just opening it up and inspecting it should uh, well, it's slow to load, so let me just get out of here. Huh, it's not responding now. Sorry, guys. I should have just done cat. Let's see. Um... Okay, well, I think I should just load that script from my local machine since I think the internet may have broken the pipe, the uh, lapse in a connection. So, so in this simple example I have, so I have a PBS script that calls this R, this R script. And this, let me just go over what's inside this PBS script for a second here. So. It's really minimalist. It doesn't even set up um, in reserve nodes explicitly. Um, you can use a script writer for that. This example doesn't do that. One thing you can do on Condo, which is in the examples from the, from the July 9th presentation, is you can do this ulimit unlimited thing, where you, uh, which gives you potentially unlimited memory. Um, that's useful because sometimes your job will crash for lack of memory. Now. Um, I mean, if it's if it's too big, and if you haven't reserved it correctly. So, oh, maybe maybe things are working again. Um, and so, whether or not you load the module first, I think this will, will work to call R. So, I this is my R command to run the job. I explicitly I explicitly 
enter the full path of R. Um, if you don't want to enter the full path, then you could just do module. Um, you could do a module load. Let me look up the command for that. So, if you want to load R, let's see, you would do a module avail to look at what what modules you you have. The module system is what LAS uses to to manage globally available software. And right here, I see that R 3.2.0 is available. So I would do module load. Whoops, module load. LAS R 3.2.0, and now I can type in R, and it loads a session. You can either do that before you submit the job, or you can reference the full path. Um, now, I do call MPI run at the beginning, and the HPC uh, help people advise me to do that. And I've had jobs rejected because I didn't call MPI run on Condo. This is not a problem in HPC class, but um, I've personally I've just been using MPI run with uh, these flags whenever I submit anything on Condo. Why would you get rejected for using MPI run? I always I never use MPI run on Condo. You never do. So you, it's it's worked for you. Yeah. Okay. It's just like Okay. Okay. So if I don't use MPI run and I use a script that script writer instead and have the full list of, of commands reserving a node, I, should I be fine? So for example, like uh, if you are just using one node, yeah. uh, then you don't even use the load, need the load file. Because uh, well, after you have been assigned the, uh, the resources, then you can just do all and then call and then use, uh, use, uh, use, 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 use hopping to actually get all the nodes, to actually get all the calls in one node. But, it, but in case, you, if you want like multiple nodes, then you need to use this file to know which particular state node you have been, you have been assigned. Because have those are your resources. Have CISO, have CISO on CISO, if you did not use MPI run, all you got access was to the blow, to the headway. No, no, no. So this actually, if you don't use MPI run, it would go everywhere. No, no, no. If you don't know, if you don't use MPI run, you have to particularly look for this, you have particularly use this file to know which state node you are actually you actually now have. Because uh, without this information, you don't know which nodes are assigned to, and you don't know which nodes are assigned to you, the state nodes. So let's say there are like 32 state nodes, and maybe for this time, you after you have put, you have you have sent all these commands, it will assign like node three, node five, and node seven to you. But then without this file, you don't know which node you have been assigned, right? So then you then don't, then you don't know where you, where your resources is. So, and then after, if you know where your resources is, then you can just accept those nodes and then run your job. Yeah. Uh, because the, 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 the thing is, the thing is, I actually, if, if you don't have nodes, you can actually access to any node, not even, uh, not even assigned by this, uh, by this DPS. But you can, you or can, cannot. You can, can, you can, you can access, access to any node. Any node. But then, uh, but it will be somehow like illegal because if you do so, you will really hard at job. So that's the reason why you have to be strict. I mean, like uh, on this uh, load file things. So those are the resources that you assign to you. You should only use those resources, not go, not just hack into other nodes that have been assigned to others. Because you have, because you can do so actually. So the moral of the story is. 
this host file flag and then PBS node file, make sure you only use nodes that are assigned to you. Um, and MP, calling MPI run in this way allows you to do that. Uh, right? Yeah, well, Right. So I, so I could have put a different node file in here, uh, which could be potentially dangerous if I access other people's nodes. But since I, yeah. since this environment variable refers to my node only, uh, then I'm okay here. So do you actually just set those environment variables? No, you get a collection of environment variables that are already set. So why? So there, I, I think that's right. And there, you really you can't check what they are on the head node. You have to submit a job in order to figure out what they are. Yeah. So we're getting towards the end here. I just want to say a couple more things. Um, uh, you can check what jobs are already running. Let's see. Uh, actually, just let me. So if I wanted to run this, I would just say qsub simple.scripts. And then if I want to check on that job, I would say qstat-u and then my username. I already have another job running. The one that I just submitted was the simple.scripts. You can see the q. So in the PBS system organizes jobs by the runtime length and the number of nodes, number of cores, um, amount of RAM that's requested, and divides up the jobs among these queues. And you can see, if you so just say queue stat and look at the jobs for everybody, you can say you can see that there are different kinds of queues. There's the long one node, long medium, etc. And under the S, you can see which ones are actually running and which ones are queued with this with this queue. And the short job that I just submitted is queued here. Uh, there is a longer job that I that I submitted a while ago that's uh, that's running now. And it's been running for 35 about 35 or 36 minutes. No, you don't. So you don't need to specify the queue that you're submitting to. So this long one node, PBS will figure that out automatically. How does it figure that out? Uh, Just from the runtime, yeah. So it's it's depending on what you requested. So if we go back to the script writer here, so this script that I just recently. Uh, but the point is, you do have to specify, right? Here's where you specify it. Right, and that simple example, I didn't. Yeah. Is it the, is it the so, so this, these are factors that all go into um, oh, choosing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So when these are not specified, like in simple.script that I just submitted, it's going to assume one node, you know, one process per node, compute node, really short wall time. But if you specify these things to scale up, it's going to put you potentially in a different queue. There's some formula that they use to take this information into account and delegate jobs. Yeah. And the other thing, very important, uh, it's just. Uh, Right. So you could just go back into your script and change the wall time in that text file. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Just one more last thing, really important. Uh, if you need to resubmit a job, go on to QStat. Make sure that you've deleted your, your jobs that, you want, that you're no longer using. So if I wanted to delete this simple at script job, I'd just say QDEL. And then I'd type in the job ID and then when I check QStat again, it should under under S, it should say C for canceled, or it should just clear that clear that out. Um, so what happens? So how do you know your job is done? 
How do you know your job is done? Uh, it's it's not. It doesn't appear under the QStat menu. That's only the, the, That's. You can you can set up in the PBS script. You can set it yeah. yourself so that you send you an email. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. It, so the script can it can send you an email. They can send okay. You a script, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. And in case your job is queued or in between your job is about to finish. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, for those of you who are listening online, thanks for thanks for listening. And I'm sorry about the long pauses. We had a lot of conversation in between. You know, all these all these things.